Today's First Friday is a nonfiction selection, so it is going to be great if you are a nonfiction reader. Also, it is filled with uh, really just all kinds of action, adventure, survival. It's going to be great if you're a fan of the I Survive series, so I would encourage you to check this out. So because this kind of starts like right with the action, it doesn't really tell you what the whole book is about, so I'm going to read the description for you. One night, on the night of February 18th, 1952, during one of the worst winter storms that New England had ever seen, two oil tankers off the shore of Cape Cod are torn in half by the force of the seas. For the men on board, survival seems impossible. What follows is a harrowing Coast Guard rescue in a small lifeboat where four young heroes beat the odds and bring more than 30 stranded sailors to safety. So nonfiction, like I said, it starts right in the middle of everything. So chapter one is called The Pendleton, which is the name of one of the ships. February 18th, 1952. Captain John Fitzgerald could barely stay on his feet aboard his rocking ship, the 503-foot long oil tanker named Pendleton. Fitzgerald had been in bad weather before, but nothing like the winter storm that was now raging off Cape Cod, Massachusetts. 50-foot waves battered his vessel violently in the pre-dawn hours. Suddenly, a thunderous roar echoed through the bowels of the ship. The crew felt a gigantic tanker rise out of the turbulent ocean. This was followed by a shudder and an ear-splitting crash, when the Pendleton nosed down seconds later. Captain Fitzgerald wasn't sure exactly what had happened, but he knew by the sound that the ship had cracked. He immediately went to the radio set to issue an SOS, but the power had gone out. 18-year-old seaman Charles Bridges was asleep in his bunk when the ship tilted and cracked. He quickly grabbed a flashlight and ran to the top deck and then out onto the catwalk leading to the bow. Then I stopped in my tracks, remembered Bridges. The catwalk floor disappeared. I realized just two more steps and I would drop straight down into the ocean. Bridges wheeled around and scurried up to the mess deck, shouting, we're in trouble. The ship is broken in two. Some of the men immediately wanted to lower the lifeboats, but Bridges told them that they were crazy. The lifeboats wouldn't stand a chance in the enormous waves. When the ship split in two, Captain Fitzgerald and seven other men were on the front section called the bow. Their half of the ship now drifted away from the stern, the rear section, where the chief engineer, Raymond Seibert, and Charles Bridges huddled, huddled together. George Tiny Myers, the ship's cook, tried to stay positive. He was a large man, weighing about 300 pounds. Usually, he was singing or joking, but today, he encouraged the men around him to be brave and to work as a team. It would be a big team because the total of 33 men were on the stern. The sailors on the back half of the ship knew the radio was in the bow. They also knew that once the ship split in two, the radio would be useless because the ship's power came from the stern. That meant that no emergency message could go out and the Coast Guard would not be aware of the disaster. Seibart and Bridges nervously looked each other over, a feeling of hopelessness spreading over them. Bridges was thinking, who will come and save us? So that is chapter one. From here on out, there's lots of action. Uh, you do even get some images thrown in throughout. So if you're transitioning into chapter books from graphic novels, this is a really great choice for you. If you are interested at all in action, adventure, survival, nonfiction, if you like I Survived, come by the library and check out The Finest Hours.